So it's been a couple of weeks since I've been able to get down here and work on the plane. I uh, had some yard work to do, things like that last weekend, but no matter. Uh, it's given the tank sealant plenty of time to cure in the trailing edge here, and uh, so now I'm back to it. So the first step today is going to be to take all these Clecos out and clean the tank sealant out of the rivet holes. So that'll be more tedious than interesting, really, so I'll probably time-lapse that. Uh, after that, I'll move on to riveting in the spar, so that'll be cool. Uh, and we'll see what else I can get done today. A couple of things I will uh, mention that I sort of left off of the videos of uh, the trailing edge, you know, gluing with the tank sealant and that sort of thing uh, that I figured I'd talk about here. Um, so back here on this bottom rib, I actually, uh, so the plans call for a blind rivet in this one last spot. Uh, very specific about that. I actually put a blind rivet in this second spot as well. Uh, the reason I did that is uh, it's a little bit tight, not, it's not that bad, uh, and I've since replaced that rivet with uh, the 426 that's actually supposed to be in this hole. Um, but the reason I did that is because I felt like I was running out of time with the tank sealant and I didn't want to get into a, a fight with this rivet down here, you know, close to the, the uh, trailing edge. I couldn't just leave a Clico in it because I needed to put that board across here. So I went ahead and used just a, a flush line rivet um, in both of these holes. Uh, but then, you know, like I say, I, I have since uh, this morning I, I drilled that out. The blind rivet is really easy to drill out because it's already got a hole through it. So you, know, you can just kind of just barely drill, pop the head off. Uh, the shank comes right out. Um, kind of, you, you take it out, you sort of realize how much stronger a solid rivet is than, than these blind rivets. So anyway, I've already taken care of that, and then the other thing, I had left a Clico uh, in here because uh, the, the horn gets in the way of the squeezer just a little bit. It's not terrible, um, but again, that was one of these things, again, I was felt like I was running out of time with the tank seal, and I wanted to get that board um, in place, didn't want to be in a hurry with some of these rivets, so I just left a Clico in here until uh, this morning, so I've, I've put, a, put a 426 in there. So. Everything's ready to go, uh, ready to move on to the next page. So nothing too exciting about taking Clecos out. I wasn't sure how big of a mess this was going to be, how much residue was going to be left on my Clecos, but uh, it didn't, wasn't too bad, I didn't think. Not terrible, pretty much picks right off. Just got to sit there and do it. Ah, there's a bad one. All right, so. But again, it just picks right off, so. I can live with that. Alright, so I've cleaned all the tank sealant up uh, and out of the holes in the trailing edge. I mostly used my little deburring bit here that I use in my um, little electric screwdriver, just twisted in my fingers and, you know, a number 40 drill bit twisted in my fingers. I also used a, um, a reamer a little bit. Got it pretty clean. Um, used mech and uh, paper towel and a uh, gray 3M pad to, you know, clean up any goop that had, had gotten onto the skin itself and um, you know that wasn't too bad. So now I'm going to go ahead and rivet the spar. I've got the spar clicoed in place to the shear clips and I'll be riveting it in place with uh, the same LP4-3 uh, blind rivets that I uh, you know used to attach the shear clips to the stiffeners and um, yeah I've already done one actually and it looks like it's going to be pretty easy so get to it. So really absolutely nothing tricky about this at all. Uh, each shear clip to spar uh, junction, or at least all but the top one, uh, has three holes so I just chose to go do the center holes on each one first and then came back and did the, the ones on either side. Uh, no trouble at all to use the squeezer here, no tight quarters or anything like that. Um, so yeah, everything went fine. I did get a comment uh, that I should spend 50 or 60 bucks at Harbor Freight and get a, a cheap pneumatic blind rivet squeezer. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I actually think that's a really good idea, even though there aren't a whole lot of blind rivets. Uh, by comparison, on the, on the plane, 50 or 60 bucks is relatively 
uh, cheap for a tool for this project, so I will probably do that. So what I'm doing here, uh, besides standing too close to the camera, is checking the plans, double checking the plans, because I'm at this point riveting the, uh, there's several different rivets, several different lengths of rivet, different types of rivet uh, that hold this spar web to the bottom rib and rudder horn and rudder stops. So there's, you know, there's just a lot of different rivets used in this part. So I'm, I'm really just uh, checking and double checking and uh, you know, putting all those in. So yeah, those were the, uh, the long one eighth flush blind rivets. Uh, there's two of those, one each that hold the top of uh, the rudder striker plates on, and uh, they sit flush on the outside. But the hole on the back side that's drilled into the uh, it's actually countersunk into the back side of the rudder horn because otherwise the grip the the rivet's grip length would not be long enough. Uh, so that was a place where many days, many weekends ago, when I was, uh, you know, completing those steps, I was wondering why in the world am I countersinking the backside of this thing. Uh, but later on in the plans, it tells you why, and that's exactly why, because the rivet wouldn't be long enough otherwise. So here I'm riveting the A and B parts of the top rib together. Uh, it takes a couple blind rivets near the back and some 470s uh, toward the front. Some of the 470s you need to buck and uh, some of the others you can get to with the squeezer. All right, so I've riveted the spar to the shear clips, uh, the top rib together and to the spar, the bottom rib and control horn and uh, striker plates and all that stuff to the spar. And now I've got the spar, uh, the skin clicko to the spar, and I'm about to do all the rivets that attach the skin to the spar. Yeah, I really need a taller table or something. So uh, I did every other rivet here, uh, starting from the center and worked my way out, then flipped it over, did the same thing uh, on the other side, and then, you know, flipped back. This did take some time. You can see how much by watching the sun creep across the windows, so that's kind of cool. Whew. All right, well, so that's done. Um, that was a little bit tedious being crouched down like this. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I got to build a taller table, uh, but it's done. It looks good. Skins are riveted to the spar. And so, um, yeah, now I'm going to do the counterbalance rib. Okay, well, I got a lot done today. I got the spar in, I got the uh, counterbalance rib in, got the trailing edge cleaned up. So um, let's see, things to look forward to. Next step is to rivet the trailing edge. So that'll be uh, something new. And then I got to bend these, uh, these over to form sort of the leading edge of the rudder and do the counterweight. And uh, yeah, so we'll see how far I get with all that stuff tomorrow.